monogenic Mendelian disorders. Uh, we're talking about the mutation of one gene, Mendelian type of inheritance, and today there are about 5,000 different diseases, and I'm going to discuss autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive, and X-linked uh, disorders. Uh, so let's start with the autosomal dominant disorders, and just to summarize, uh, this affects uh, both homozygotes and heterozygotes, uh, but it is usually heterozygotes, which means that there is an inheritance from one uh, parent. And remember that in an autosomal dominant disorder, you only need one allele uh, for it to be uh, expressed, whereas in uh, heterozygotes, I mean, so, excuse me, autosomal recessive you would need both. So uh, in this case uh, both males and females are affected and uh, there is transmission from one generation to the other and this would affect 50 percent of children. If you were looking at a uh, Punnett square you would notice that about 50 percent of children are affected with autosomal dominant disorders whereas with autosomal recessive disorders you would have a one in four chance or 25 percent. So let's talk about an example here, we'll talk about three, familial uh, hypercholesteremia and Marfan syndrome and Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. First, familial hypercholesteremia, which is a subgroup of the of hyperlipoproteinemia. Uh, this is the most frequent Mendelian disorder and it's one in every 500 births. And this is a mutation of a gene encoding the LDL receptor, which is 70% with the plasma cholesterol. For heterozygotes, it's two to three times the elevation, elevation of plasma cholesterol levels. And for homozygotes, it's a five, uh, five times the elevation of the plasma cholesterol levels. Heterozygotes uh, asymptomatic are asymptomatic until adulthood, and then you would see xanthomas. Uh, along the uh, tendon sheets or the coronary AS and remember xanthomas are the um, how do you explain it? A, uh, a type of uh, uh, a deposit of fat under the skin and, um, and then moving on for the homozygotes you'd have xanthomas in childhood and death due to MI by the age of 15 years so a very very serious disease Next, Marfan syndrome, and this was discovered by the French uh, pediatrician Marfan in 1896, uh, looking at a, a young girl with a typical habitus, and habitus is the typical shape of the body. Um, and what this is, is a, an abnormal protein, fibrillin, which is secreted by fibroblasts, which is, you remember, is part of the, the ECM, or the extracellular matrix. And in this case, there is an impairment of the collagenous and elastic tissue with a decreased firmness of connect connective tissue. And uh, this means stretchy skin, but not only outside, because we're talking about connective tissue, then there are so many organs in the body that are going to be affected. And um, principally, uh, the clinical manifestations are shown in three systems, which would be skeletal, ocular changes and the cardiovascular system. So talking about the skeletal system, you would notice uh, slender, elongated habitus, long legs, arms and fingers, arachnodactyly, and a high arched or gothic palate, and hyperextensibility of joints. So very, very stretchy, and spinal deformities such as uh, pectus um, excavatum or sunken in chest or pigeon breast. Uh, some say that President Lincoln uh, displayed a sort of uh, Marfan syndrome shape. Um, or uh, anyway, moving on to ocular changes, there, there would be a dislocation or uh, subluxation of the lens and weakness of the suspensory ligaments. For the cardiovascular system, there would be a fragmentation of elastic fibers in the tunica medica, media. Um, aorta, and an aneurysmal dilation, aortic dissection, rupture in 35 to 40 percent of patients, 
and then there is an incomplete, and excuse me, an incompetence of the aortic valve, which is a dilation, and tricuspidal, and or mitral valve, mitral valve, floppiness, aka a floppy valve. So then we have um, those are the three uh, principal clinical manifestations of Marfan syndrome, but it's also very similar to M um, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome which is a genetic defect of collagen fibrils and there are several types both autosomal dominant and recessive and here also we have a hyperextensibility of the skin hypermobility of joints uh, such as with like a, contor a contortionist there are joint dislocations and other vulnerabilities and um, of course the you know you have uh, similarly you have ruptures of large vessels um, because of the uh, increase in the elasticity and then the problems with the colon and cornea. So we see these uh, these clinical manifestations and uh, those were just uh, some examples of the autosomal dominant disorders. So familial hypercholesteremia, Marfan syndrome and Ehlers-Danlos syndrome.